Emmanuel Baptist Church pastor Stephen Smith is facing calls to resign over covering up inappropriate behavior. What exactly happened? Where does it all go from here? We'll dive in and discuss in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you on the news of the end times and so much more. Thanks for spending part of your day with me today, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. And for someone like me, well, it's kind of my only option. I remind you guys as well, if you enjoy and appreciate the work I do here, why not consider blessing my ministry with a generous donation? There's a couple different ways you could do it. One easy way, just click that super thanks button down below on this video here. That is how you can tip me with a one-time donation of any amount. Whatever you can contribute, it helps and adds up. Doesn't matter how small or how big. Or become a premium member of Not By Sight News. Join my Patreon today for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash Not By Sight News, link in the description. When you join the Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit my main YT platform. I always take care of the Patreon members first. You guys also get exclusive links to these topics that we discussed, and I only include them on Patreon now just because of the way things are going on YT. I don't want to get popped anymore for putting things in there they don't like, so it'll be for you on Patreon, but also there you can comment censorship-free on all videos and even send me DMs. So check it out again, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, link in the description. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. All right, let's talk about Pastor Stephen Smith. He leads the over 2,000-member congregation of Emmanuel Baptist Church in Arkansas. And calls now increasing for the pastor to resign over his role in covering up inappropriate behavior of a former staff member. So how did this all start? Well, it was during the church's Sunday, December 17th service where the pastor had addressed the allegations that were going on. Now, let me point this out. The only reason that he even brought it up at all is the fact that there was an article put out uh, at a local uh, local outlet there in Arkansas that actually had been doing their own investigation into this individual who worked at the church by the name of Patrick Miller. And, well, the article had highlighted the fact that there had been an investigation ongoing uh, into Patrick into Patrick Miller for his time at the church, uh, the inappropriate behavior that he was involved with. He was a former director of ministry there with youth. So uh, this was not something that Pastor Stephen Smith expected. And, you know, I guess he got word of it a little bit before the article had come out. And, you know, by that point, anybody in the church was going to see what was going on. They were going to read the article. So he had to address it. And the first thing that he said was that, I regret not telling you all about this sooner. Yeah, yeah, you don't say, right? You don't say. You regret not telling them sooner. And here's the thing. This all went on back in like 2015. Now, Miller had resigned his position about a year before Stephen Smith became the lead pastor. So, you know, the pastor Stephen Smith got there around 2017. Miller had resigned his position in January of 2016. However, uh, it was made known to the deacons of the church as far as what had gone on, and then Pastor Stephen Smith later found out about this as well. And there were apparently things that were going on in the background that they were looking into at the time. Uh, Miller was arrested, and he's you know been charged and everything now up to this point, but, but still... No one in the church knew anything about what was going on. Now, at the time, during the Sunday, December 17th service, Smith had even stated that, you know, if it was necessary and if it would help for the healing process, that he would resign his position. Now, that uh, that same sentiment was not echoed during the church's Sunday, January 14th service, as Smith provided an update to the congregation, letting them know that, you know, many have called for him to just move on from this. Oh, I don't know who would be calling for that. Uh, but he stressed the need to continue on here with this investigation. He actually said that many of the deacons in the church are helping to uh, head up this investigation and, you know, do what they can to get the church back on track so that the healing process can begin. Does this sound familiar to anybody out there? And by the way, this is a congregation that is associated with the Southern Baptist Convention. So, we really shouldn't be surprised at this point when it comes to any SBC church 
uh, and there being allegations of inappropriate behavior that had been going on. Uh, now, one deacon in particular is calling for Smith to resign now, saying that he has absolutely no integrity whatsoever. And if true healing is really going to, you know, take place here, then Smith has to go. Now, I agree with that. Now, Smith even said as much. Again, that was in the December service, but he wasn't saying that uh, during the January 14th service at all, and, and no other mention at all of him, uh, you know, stepping aside here so somebody else can take over. Uh, that is the absolute right thing to do. If this guy knew about this for years, for years, and then he waited and finally told the congregation after everything that had already been done at that point, I mean, that's, yeah. He, he should not be in his position any longer because the deacon's right. He cannot be trusted. The integrity is now gone from this man. Completely gone. Allow a new pastor to come in there, still do your investigation, uh, and start off fresh. Because, again, so many have been hurt by this. And you can't imagine. I mean, just imagine how these congregants felt when he told them what he did. Uh, and everything about Miller and his time at the church uh, serving in the ministry and you got to understand, too, that for many of these congregants, they are parents, right? And they sent their kids to, you know, the ministry, to the uh, to the youth events and all that. So where Miller was present. And, you know, if this man, Pastor Stephen Smith, knew about what was going on and he didn't share that information, yes, he should be gone and gone immediately. Whether or not that happens or not, we'll see. Uh, and also, uh, whether or not the deacons would actually, you know, get him out themselves and either, you know, you know vote to uh, to fire him or, or whatever the case, or at least put him on a leave of absence as, uh, you know, an investigation goes on. But I think a, a full on, you know, removal of him needs to take place uh, so that they can start off new. Interestingly enough, something else, a little another note here about this, apparently one of the deacons... Uh, who is a part of Emmanuel Baptist Church, is the father-in-law of uh, Patrick Miller, the same one that got, you know, the boot here for everything. Uh, and I guess he remains there uh, as a member. So I am curious, it wasn't, it wasn't mentioned, but I am curious if the father-in-law here had any idea uh, about what Miller was doing at the time. Just something to throw out there, but uh, I want to hear from you, especially if you are somebody who attends Emmanuel Baptist Church. What are your thoughts on the way that, you know, Stephen Smith has handled this, uh, the deacons, this whole entire situation that's just been a big mess? Let me know uh, down in the comment section. And I will have more information on this. It will, again, be over on my Patreon uh, just because of the nature of, again, the topics that we're discussing here. Uh, if you're already a part of the Patreon, great. You're already getting this info. If not, hey, why not sign up and you guys bless this ministry as well. And you can do it for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Uh, link is in the description. Of course, if you prefer to bless the ministry just by clicking the super thanks button on this very YT video here, you can do that as well. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach, of course. I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines, keep you guys up to speed and everything else going on. I do it because, yes, we're in the last days, really the final hours, and Christ is coming soon. For anybody watching right now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord though and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then, you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. 
Don't forget, the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash news. link in the description, or just hit the super thanks button down below on this video here, where you can tip me with a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.